Hello and welcome to another Swift and Xcode tutorial. My name's Cal and in today's tutorial we're going to be building a very simple note taking app. Our note taking app is going to use core data. So we're going to make all of our data persistent so that when the user closes the app and they come back in and their note that they took in the previous session or in their, before they closed it, all that data is going to persist and be there when they want to use it. So a more real world application rather than just building a note taking app um, and the UI side, we're going to be doing a little bit more of the back end sort of thing. So there's a lot of good content. It's a bit of a longer video. The first part, we're just going to get a simple adding a note to a list. And then in the middle part, we're going to make it so that you can edit a note. And the final part, we're going to make it so that you can also delete a note. New Xcode project. This is an iOS app. So just selecting app. I'm going to call it note app core data. We're just going to make sure that we select core data here and our programming language is Swift. As always, the first thing we're going to do is head into the main storyboard and organize our layout, drag in a navigation controller, and then just move the storyboard entry point to the navigation controller. I'm going to rename the title here to notes and zoom in a little bit so we can actually see what's going on. And then I'm going to drag in a button into the navigation bar. I'm going to change the text to nothing and make the background this plus symbol. You can see it's a bit wide there, so I'm just going to adjust the width so it's a nice square. With our button, I'm going to create a segue and I'm going to say present modally to our view controller that we already had. Next, what we're going to do is select on the table view and I'm going to make the row height not automatic. I'm going to give it a fixed width of 90. Drag in a label onto our table view cell and I'm going to copy and paste that down. So we've got two labels, one in top of the other. Give it some constraints so that it sits at the top and left of our table view cell. Space, trailing space and leading space and just adjusting those numbers. Just want to make sure that the trailing space is greater than or equal to with the bottom one equal widths as well as center horizontally. Both of those constraints are relative to the top label. We're going to give our top label a height as well as bottom space, just changing the multiplier there to one. Uh, vertical spacing from the bottom one. We're going to allow to have two lines because it's going to be a slightly longer bit of text and just setting the text alignment to the left. And then I'm going to make the top one bold as well as make the font size a little bit bigger. And I'm going to call this title and description. Uh, next, what we're going to do is our layout for our detail view controller. I'm just going to drag in a text field. I'm also going to drag in a text view and then I'm going to drag in two labels. So the first one I've just dragged in and then I've copy and pasted the second one. And I'm just going to give it some constraints. So center it in the container as well as a little bit of space to the top I'm going to rename that to title and the other one to description i'm going to center the text field off the title as well as giving it equal widths to the safe area and then just setting the multiplier to 0.75 so the text view is going to take up 75 percent of the width do the same thing pretty much for the text view centering it off our description label as well as giving it a height because the text view needs height as well and yeah, so you can see we've just got a pretty simple sort of form we've got the, the text field of the title at the top and the text view of the description below Next, what we're going to do is just change the background color to a nice light gray so that the text view stands out a little bit and then just remove that lorem ipsum. Cool. And next, what we're going to do is create a couple of files, file new Swift file. I'm calling the first one note cell, just hitting command and N, new Swift file. I'm going to call this one note table view. And next, we're going to rename our view controller. We're just going to call that note detail VC, change the class name and a little bit of tidying up. In our note cell file, we're just going to import the UI kit. The note cell class is of type UI table view cell. And the same thing in the note table view, import the UI kit. Note table view is of type UI table view controller. Nice. So we can head back into the main storyboard and rename the class of all of our components to the correct class. So table view for the table view, cell for the cell. So linking all of our storyboard components with their corresponding Swift class. I actually changed my mind on our present modally. I think I want to keep the navigation bar so I'm just going to change this to show and you can see now we've got the navigation bar and the reason I want the navigation bar is I think it's going to look nicer to put the save button up in the top right corner so that's what I've done there. I've just dragged in a button and renamed that to save. We open up the assistant editor and I'm going to create an action for our save button. I'm just calling it save action and then I'm going to create outlet for both of our text view and our text field. So just calling the first one title text field and the next one description text view. We're going to head over into our note cell and just create the outlets over there. So title label and description label. And we can close off our assistant editor now and we're actually going to create our entity. So I've just headed into our note app core data file and I'm going to hit new entity or add entity. And I'm going to rename our entity to note, add an attribute of ID. This is going to be an integer. Add in two strings, which so title and description, as well as one boolean, which is deleted. Open up our left side panel, code gen, manual or none. And that just means that we're going to create our own Swift file and manage the entity of our note manually. So yeah, I've just created another Swift file, called it note, 
and then we're going to import the core data. It's of type object note, so an objective C note, and then the class is note of type NS managed object. And then I'm going to create an NS managed variable called ID, which is an NS number, so that integer variable we created earlier. And then I'm going to create two strings, title and description, as well as I actually changed my mind. I'm going to make this one deleted date rather than just a boolean. So we're going to store the timestamp for when the note is deleted. And then just heading back into the note app core data and changing that from boolean to date. So we're going to head into our note table view Swift file and I'm going to declare an array of notes. So our object that we just created override the self heroic index path method and just declare our cell. So I'm going to say let note cell is equal to table view dot DQ reusable cell with identifier an identifier of note cell ID casting it. So as note cell, so our note cell Swift file return that note cell. And before we go any further, I'm just going to copy and paste that identifier head into the main storyboard and click on our note cell open up the side pane and we just want to add it in here identifier so note cell id so those two strings have to match for the cell to be identified and then we're just going to head back into that and declare a note so this note of type note this note is equal to get the current row out of the table view note list and index path dot row and then we're going to say note cell dot title label dot text is equal to this note dot title and same thing for description cool so next we need to override the number of rows in section method so i'm just typing number of rows in section and then overriding that function and we're just going to return note list dot count and i forgot to say for index path uh, here at our note cell so just putting that in now and we're actually going to make this note list a public variable so it can be accessed from other classes we're actually going to access it from the note detail view controller yeah just heading into that class now i'm going to import core data and then in our save action we're going to say let app delegate equal to ui application dot share delegate as app delegate so that's our little app delegate dot swift file let context of type ns manage object context equal to app delegate dot persistent container dot view context so we now have the context for which we want to save our entity next we're going to create an entity so i'm just going to say let entity equal to ns entity description entity for name and we're going to give it note so our entity's name is note so that has to be correct correct and case sensitive i believe and then we're going to give it context which we just got and then we're going to say let new note equal to note and we're going to give it an entity which is our entity we just created and then insert it into our context new note id is equal to note list count as ns number this should be an auto incrementing id and new note dot title is equal to title text field dot text and new note description is equal to description text view dot text nice and then we just need to call context dot save so save our editing context and we actually have to put this in a do catch statement so do try and catch if it happens to fail i'm just going to print out a quick message context save error and then after we save our context so we save our new note I'm just going to append it to our memory note list as well as pop our view controller. So just go back to the previous view controller. Now inside our previous view controller, which is our note table view dot Swift file, we're just going to override the view did appear method and just call table view dot reload data. Nice. And if we quickly build and run this, you can see we can add a new note, give it a title and a description. And if we hit save, it's popping up in our list. And we'll do that again. So we're just going to say bike lock and give it four nines. However, if we want to make the data persistent, we actually have to load from our core data back into our memory note list. So inside of our note table view controller, I'm going to import core data, create a variable called first load and it's equal to true. If on view did load, first load is equal to true, set it to false. So we're just going to run that once and then head into our note detail VC and just copy those two lines. And then below, we're going to say let request equal to NS fetch request of type NS fetch request result. And we're going to give it our entity name. So note with a capital N, create another do catch statement. And we're going to say let results of type NS array equal to try context dot fetch request as NS array. Inside our catch statement, just print out fetch failed. And then we're going to go through our list of results. So we're going to say for result in results, let note equal to result as note. So just casting our result to a note. And then we're going to say note list dot append note. Cool. And if we build and run this again, you can see that those two notes have been loaded from the database and into our memory and then therefore into our note list app. And the next thing we're going to do is create an edit so that when you click on one of the cells, it takes you back into our note detail view controller and then you can then edit the note and save it. Cool. So just heading into the main storyboard, I'm going to click on our current segue and just give it a name. So an identifier and then I'm going to create a new segue from our note view controller to our detail and I'm going to call this one edit note and then I'm going to copy that and just rename this title to note details and head back into our note table view file. We want to override the did select row 
at function and then we're just going to call self dot perform segue with that identifier that we just copied so edit note and the sender is self override the prepare for segue method and we're just going to say if the segue dot identifier is equal to our edit note segue say let index path equal to table view dot index path for selected row and then say let note detail is equal to segue dot destination as note detail vc let selected note of type note selected note is equal to get our note out of our note list at the position heading into our note detail view controller we just want to declare a variable called selected note which is optional and it's default to nil and then we're just going to say note detail dot selected note is equal to selected note so pass the selected note from our table view into our detail view controller and then say table view dot deselect row at index path and set the animated to true back inside our detail view controller we're just going to say in our view did load if selected note is not equal to nil title dot text field dot text is equal to selected note dot title and the same thing for description so we're just putting if there's already been a note title or description we're just putting that back into the text view and the text field and then in our save action we're just going to say if selected note is equal to nil meaning it's a new note do what we've already been doing otherwise we're going to be editing a note for this, we want to copy most of what we've done in the table view controller and stick that in here in our else statement. And instead of note list dot append note, we're going to say if the note we've gotten is equal to selected note, note dot title is equal to text field dot text. And same thing for the description, save the context and pop the navigation controller again. And you can see now we've got an edit working so I can go in and manage the title as well. I can still create a new note. The next thing to our core data and note taking app is our delete button. So I've just set it into the main storyboard and I've put in a delete button just below our description text view. Changing the title to delete, going to make the color red as well, make the text a little bit bigger and making it all capitals as well as making the text bold. I'm also going to change our save button, just make that a little bit bigger. Um, I feel like I could have done that earlier, but anyway, here we are doing it now. And then I'm going to open up the assistant editor just to create an outlet for our delete button. So right click and drag below and create an action. I'm just calling our action delete note. And then I'm going to head into our note detail view controller. And inside that, I'm just going to copy down what we've done, our two main lines, so our delegate and our context line, as well as our request line from our edit. And we're just going to say, uh, instead, I'm going to say note.deleted date is equal to new dates. Inside our table view, we're just going to create a function. We're going to call it non deleted notes. It's going to return an array of notes. We're going to create another note array at the top of the function. And we're just going to say for note in note list, if the deleted date is nil, we're going to append our note to our non deleted note list and then just return that list. And then we just need to go through our table view controller. Anywhere that it said note list, we need to replace it with non deleted notes, or at least anywhere that the user is going to see it, we're going to replace it. Yeah, if we go and run this one last time, I'm just going to create a note calling it note to delete. And if we delete that, you can see it's gone from the view. So this has been a simple note app using Swift and Xcode and a very basic core data tutorial. We learned how to edit persistent core data, we learned how to add new persistent core data and as well delete well at least set a flag deleted in core data so i hope you enjoyed the tutorial and i'll catch you guys in the next video